All right, everyone, now I wanted to fully flesh out my thoughts about AI. I think that it's both potentially one of the most good transformative things that we can possibly be developing, and at the same time, potentially one of the most disastrous. For example, link in the description archived, of course, it talks specifically about uh, uh, weather and things like that. Imagine that you had an AI program that was geared only towards, you know, monitoring weather. So barometric pressure, wind speed, all of those things. Assuming that you have enough data, in theory it could predict the weather pretty much perpetually. You'd have to retool it from time to time because of the butterfly effect, but beyond that, for uh, intermediate periods, you could pretty much guess where that tornado is going to come from. You can pretty much guess the hurricane's path. You can save a lot of lives. That's a great thing. You can apply it to chemistry. For good or for bad, by the way, you know, building explosives or whatever. Um, and you can synthesize new drugs more easily. You can apply it to biology. You can apply it to DNA. You can do all sorts of fun things with it, especially within health and science and things like that. And these would be very good for the world. And the more the world cooperates on such things, by the way, the more that that is amplified and the, the better the AI generally will become. In the last 10 years, AI has gone from very, very rudimentary, like, you know, basically can spit out text. Like, uh, you remember the uh, chatbot that Google had? I don't know if they still have it. I can't even remember what it was called. That was a long time ago. And you could sort of like chat with it. Well, look at the AI companions that they have now. It's like night and day. Uh, it's far less rudimentary than before. I think there are two problems, though with AI. Now, I don't think it's going to destroy the world or something like that, although it is a plausible scenario. I, I, I hope that humankind can, you know, not uh, glass the entire world over. There are two problems. The first is corporations and the second is state actors. So corporations tend to be the ones that are fielding anything approaching sophisticated AI at the moment. It's like Amazon and Google and companies like that. Uh, Grok with Twitter, for example, on X. Um, it tends to be big corporations. Uh, ask yourself who runs them. People who are not always necessarily the most benevolent characters in the world. So the AI, it's being used um, both for public entertainment and for other purposes, generally speaking, is being fielded by big corporations. Very proprietary, um, very regulated, uh, very uh, extremely technologically sophisticated, but the people that are running those companies aren't necessarily the sort of people you want to trust with that power. The bigger problem, though, is state actors. That is that governments have begun to dig into AI. Uh, there's, uh, for example, right now there's an article up. It's about China and microprocessors and things like that, and the United States attempting to cock block the Chinese from obtaining uh, U.S processing chips and things like that for fear that they'll create some sort of military AI advantage, uh, which I agree with, although it's not really actionable because they can just buy it through a third party, so it doesn't really make sense. You know, smuggling does exist, believe it or not, still to this day. A uh, little bit different from the uh, old days of the uh, the old Caribbees and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, it does happen. So it's inevitable that they're going to make that breakthrough. They're going to adapt U.S. microprocessing and shit like that. It's going to happen. Uh, so I think it's an empty gesture. The right thing to do? Yes. Is it actually meaningful? No. Sort of like uh, what Trump did with the travel ban during the lockdown period. Did you have to do it? Yeah. Was it the right thing to do? Technically speaking, yeah. Did it work? No. And this was entirely predictable to anyone with any knowledge of how viruses and bacteria tend to work. Um, the implications of a militarized AI, though, are quite frightening. If you apply it solely to defense, it could be really, really good. An AI system, for example, hatched into uh, a, a missile defense system could bullseye the enemy missiles and save lives. Um, the problem is that the same system that can be used for defense can then be retooled for offense. So you might end up with a weird situation in which you have some war in the future, maybe 10 years from now, 15 years from now, in which two countries are fighting one another, and one of them is bombarding them with rockets that are AI trained, and the other one is attempting to defend with AI trained anti-rocket systems, and then you have to sort of sit back and see whose AI is better. 
Uh, there's a reason why the U.S. government is investing so heavily in this technology. Thankfully, we have an exceptionally beefy tech sector, so we have the advantage when it comes to that. But at what cost? Uh, while I support my country, and I certainly don't want, you know, Chinese communists to have far more sophisticated AI military systems or something like that, because that would be a big fucking problem. You could even... Uh, potentially uh, undermine somebody's nuclear capacities with AI. Uh, it, it could become a problem. This, this is the plausible scenario. Thankfully, one I don't think will happen because of the multipolar world, but it could. Um, it, 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 but the corporations that are actually developing that technology, in partnership with the government, of course, are they really trustworthy? Therein lies the problem. I like AI. I like to use Grok to generate, you know, crazy images like uh, one of the things that I did lately was uh, I got the idea of having like HP Lovecraft pitching corporate products and, you know, saying dark and, and grotesque things about them. I couldn't get Grok to generate a competent image of HP Lovecraft, though. For some reason, it appears to believe that HP Lovecraft and General Tarkin, for example, are the same person. Uh, so I was generating Cthulhu, and, and, you know, it generates that really well. So, you know, Cthulhu... Uh, pitching Red Bull. Ah, Red Bull. It'll give you a variety of uh, us usually vestigial appendages or something like that. And that's funny. This is the entertainment side, though. We're talking about military applications, both good and bad, offensive and defensive. Uh, we're talking about scientific applications, which could be used to great benefit. It could also be used to extreme harm. And so the hope is that because the world is multipolar, that is that there are multiple competing powers, the hope is that generally speaking, things will move in the good direction as opposed to the bad direction. But we're not 100% sure. Again, there is a plausibility that you could end up with a world war that is entirely fought by AI. And the human casualties won't be on the battlefield, they'll be in the goddamn street. So we're all hoping that that doesn't happen. That's about all. Peace out.